Today, when we talk about SASE, uh, we typically think about SASE, SD-WAN, and sites. But one thing we forget is we are living in a hybrid workforce. When an employee is in the office and when they go home, they expect same user experience, same ability to access applications that could be SaaS enabled, that could be privately hosted in the data center or could be available uh, or hosted in the public cloud. And today, from a design perspective, enterprises typically have disparate solutions. They have different solutions for the brand security. They have different solutions for the remote access. And as a result, the user experience of the employee is very, very different. Not only is it frustrating for the employees, but it also causes a lack of visibility, lack of understanding of what the user is doing from an administrator's perspective. And it can also cause misconfiguration of security, causing you know, uh, breaches, as we all know. So one of the, the biggest problems that we uncovered in our 18 months of um, selling Unified SaaS as, uh, as a service was how this ultimate user experience was an afterthought and the the thinking or the design from a network perspective did not include the remote access usage and the employee user experience um, as one of the uh, as a primary factors while decision making so as an example uh, if you're a salesperson you're in the office uh, you have certain access uh, when you go to salesforce and you can you know change opportunities you can do things uh, but sometimes when you're going home the access could be more restricted you could be in different countries you could be you know in a cafeteria and it's really important that the security policies are consistent no matter where the user is coming from it's really important that the administrator have administrators have the visibility to what the users are doing and and what policies are enforced so for us to have true convergence of networking and security we have to make sure that while we uh, have the network accessibility uh, we also take care of the same security controls for the users who are coming from home or remote access users. Uh, in the example I talked about from a Salesforce perspective, whether the user is coming from the office or the or the home, they need to have ability to do the CASB kind of controls uh, in terms of what is allowed, what is not allowed. And implementing that requires that this traffic is processed from a single pass architecture perspective. And that's where Ariaka's one pass architecture comes into play, where we ensure that all the traffic, no matter where it's coming from, is either processed locally at the branch in the CPE device, which is called ANAP, or is processed in our POPs. And the same exact security policies and visibility is available, uh, no matter where the user is coming from. Ariaka is redefining the remote user zero trust network access by what we mean by that is um, when we talk about zero trust network access it's not just about security but it's also about the user experience when i am in a remote part of the world coming from um, brazil and i'm trying to go to the workloads which are on Amazon West somewhere in Seattle, uh, just because my network connectivity may not be very high performant, um, it's actually very difficult to use the application. So what Ariaka provides is two things. We offer the best network capabilities. It's a LAN-like access over WAN by using our WAN optimization, deduplication, compression technologies. On top of that, we apply security policies uh, like um, CASB security policies for SaaS applications, um, access control based on the identity, based on the location, based on the company uh, security policies. And by applying the combination of the best network user experience and consistent security policies, we are able to redefine the way people think about uh, zero trust network access. So you may know of Ariaka as um, a leading SD-WAN provider uh, to offer the best network connectivity. And uh, what we have also built over the period of time is we have all these different security controls uh, that can now be added to the existing SD-WAN and get on the SASE journey, which we talk about um, as um, modernize your infrastructure, optimize for networking and security, and then finally transform with SASE. Uh, the other the other way to think about this is any new sites or any new deployments that you uh, that you're planning or architecting uh, think of those from directly networking and security integrated sasi solution so instead of going through the journey of getting the sd man first and then adding security on top of it um, it might make more sense to think of it as a unified sasi with secure network access
for Ariyaka, we process any and all kind of network traffic. AI is yet another network traffic for us. Uh, just like we saw public cloud adoption and um, you know traffic going to the public cloud, uh, we are now also seeing a lot of AI traffic type. Now, what's unique and what's different about this is not only AI traffic distributed more than um, what we are normally used to, but it's also of a special type because uh, AI has clearly multiple different protocols that are used. There are APIs, and now we are talking about agentic AI. So not only the, the distribution patterns of AI traffic is different, but also the composition of AI traffic is different. So at Ariaka, what we did was we, we do three things for the AI traffic. We provide the best connectivity. And it's really important because your um, when your RAG models are in, in um, action, uh, the time sensitive aspect of it and the data availability in the real time is really critical, very important. So having a very reliable network connectivity is of great importance. So we offer this really simple, you know, uh, reliable network connectivity for all your AI traffic. We offer observability using AI, which is another interesting conversation where customers don't even know that there is such a large amount of AI traffic. A lot of times customers block access to AI applications uh, such as ChatGPT because it doesn't fit into their policy. But one thing they forget is when they are going to the websites and their users are going to the websites, they are actually interacting with agentic AI. They are interacting with chatbots, which is nothing but AI agents that are trying to communicate with your users. And users could put in like sensitive data, they could actually ask a question which has information that may not be right. Uh, so, AI is not just the traffic that we understand. Um, there's also a lot of hidden AI traffic that happens. So AI Observe allows our customers to have visibility into that different layers of AI traffic. And lastly, and the most important aspect is most of the security controls fail because they don't use the standard protocol and the way the security engines were designed. With AI, there is new ways of communication. There is uh, new APIs. So that's where AI Secure from Ariaka is designed to do access control for AI traffic, threat protection, as well as data leakage prevention on the AI type of traffic. As, as an example, we talked about hidden AI traffic via a chatbot on a website. Now, if a user types sensitive data in that chatbot, you have lost the sense, like you, it's a data leakage example where you have lost the sensitive data. It could also be an intellectual property for all you know. So being able to capture that communication uh, is very difficult. Not only is it difficult uh, just because it's going through a different channel, but also the format of it. Today, a lot of communication is done using natural language. And most of the traditional security like DLP solutions are looking for pattern matches and they're looking for 16 digit credit card number. But I can spell my credit card number in words. I can say my credit card number has 16 digit and the 13th digit is T-H-R-E-E -E, or I can actually spell it out. Um, and that's something which the traditional DLP engines will not get. So these are the new challenges because of the natural language interactions and the format in which the communications happens. AI has been a magical tool. Um, one of the big learnings that we had was um, when we are presenting logs or data to our customers, we spent a lot of time creating dashboards, reports, and we always had to understand what customers' intent would have been. Today with AI, all we have to do is give them a search button and give them access to our data. And they can now actually ask questions to the data and find some very interesting information that we had no idea would be um, you know, so business critical for our customer. So AI has actually seeped into all the aspects, whether it is how do I identify, do I have the right policies in place? How do I identify patterns of the user? How do I predict the behavior of not only my network, but also what are my areas of exposure, uh, my attack surfaces, and then AI actually helps us identifying these patterns and in fact predicting some of these things that we should be proactively working on. And while we do all these great technological advances and build new software capabilities, one thing I always like to remind people is the operational aspects of adopting security. Technologies always existed, 
they have been around, but so have been the breaches. So the secret sauce is to operationalize these technologies and be able to implement them in your environment, in your way, to make sure that it is a business enabler and not something that's getting in the way of the business. So keep watching this space. Ariaka is fully committed to providing this easy to use, operationally simple um, security and controls uh, with our unified SaaS as a service 2.0.